Hello and welcome to Insight Ophthalmology. I am Dr. Amrit and I welcome you to the corneal dystrophy series. This is the fifth lecture and we are focusing on the Bowman's layer dystrophies. In the latest classification, these dystrophies are not categorized separately but are actually considered part of the epithelial stromal TGF beta 1 dystrophies, meaning they involve mutations in the TGF beta 1 gene. Previously, the two Bowman's layer dystrophy were referred to as the corneal dystrophy of Bowman's layer, that is CDP type 1 and type 2. And now they are classified as the Reese Buckler's corneal dystrophy and the Thyle Benge corneal dystrophy. The other epithelial stromal TGF beta 1 dystrophies that you can see over here are the lattice corneal dystrophies and the granular corneal dystrophy, and we will be covering them in the next video. For today, our focus is going to be on the RBCD, that is the Rice Buckler corneal dystrophy, and the Thyle Benke corneal dystrophy. The first one is classified as the category 1 in the IC3D evidential classification of the corneal dystrophies. And it is also referred to as the corneal dystrophy of Bowman's layer CDB type 1. And sometimes it is also referred to as the granular corneal dystrophy type 3. Now, it has some similarity morphologically or and in phenotype uh, with the granular corneal dystrophies and therefore the rice buckler corneal dystrophy in some literature is also referred to as the granular corneal dystrophy type 3. Let's discuss some of the other high yield points about the RBCD. Number one, it's a Bowman's layer dystrophy in the TGF beta 1 spectrum. It is inherited in an autosomal dominant fashion. The most commonly associated mutation here is the R124L mutation in the TGF beta 1 gene and it is located on the chromosome number 5. So patients here are going to present with severe recurrent corneal erosions from a very young age and sometimes even soon after birth. These erosions are typically more severe in the RBCD compared to the second dystrophy that we'll discuss today, that is the Thiel Benke corneal dystrophy. Now, while recurrent e erosions can occur in other epithelial dystrophies also, in case of the Reese Buckler corneal dystrophy, the vision loss usually develops in the second and third decades. And in severe cases, it can even occur in the first decade of life. Now, here's a question for you which all corneal dystrophies you're going to find? painful recurrent corneal erosions. So if you know the answer, give the answer in the comment section. Okay, let's discuss the signs now. On slit lamp examination, the hallmark finding here is the gray-white geographical or reticular sub-epithelial opacities at the level of the Bowman's layer and usually they are centered in the visual axis. The overlying epithelium would be irregular and very important to remember is that there is no vascularization unless the, unlike the uh, gelatinous corneal dystrophy. In early childhood, these patients may show just an irregular gray opacity in the Bowman's layer with episodes of erosions and then hazy epithelium. And over time, all these geographical and reticular opacities will enlarge, they become confluent and they take on a classic plaque-like appearance in contrast to the honeycomb pattern that you see in the Thiel Benke corneal dystrophy. So remember, geographical or reticular grayish white subepithelial opacity at the level of Bowman's layer represents your Reese Buckler's corneal dystrophy. In advanced disease, however, the opacities can extend to the periphery as well, and they can give the anterior cornea a ground glass appearance with poor tear film stability. Another important point regarding the RBCD is it is associated with decreased corneal sensations. And this occurs because the Bowman's layer gets affected. And the Bowman's layer is actually the entry point for subbasal corneal nerves, as you can see in the diagram. And as it gets affected, it gets replaced by scar like tissue and deposits, and therefore the subbasal corneal nerves get affected, contributing to the decreased sensations and also poor epithelial healing and recurrent erosions in these cases. Now let's talk about the imaging, which is a high yield point for diagnosing and also planning. On the anterior segment OCT, the hallmark finding in RBCD is a sharply margined hyperreflective band at the level of the Bowman's layer. It's very important. This 
crisp stromal interface shows no saw tooth protrusions towards the epithelium which is important so why does this matter because this feature helps you to differentiate rbcd from the uh, thiel benke corneal dystrophy that is a tbcd so in rbcd you are going to find a sharp demarcation line between the bowmans and the stroma and in the in place of bowmans you will find a hyper reflective band like structure whereas in tbcd you will have saw tooth like projections which are projecting into the anterior epithelium and the stromal margin with the hyper reflectivity will also be poor okay so another important point is clinically this anterior segment oct guides us in deciding the depth related to the treatment of the condition so whenever you are planning depth specific surface treatment uh, like phototherapeutic keratectomy so this anterior segment oct can help you to target only the affected layer affected layer or affected part of the cornea on histopathology the bowman's layer is absent and that gets replaced by scar like tissue consisting of mostly the um, posi cellular hyaline deposits so basically scar is nothing but collagen and hyaline right and therefore on mason trichome stain they will appear as bright red bands on electron microscopy you will find rod shaped bodies which are arranged in parallel bands and this is again a high yield feature in rbcd so usually it's asked in examinations that where do you find these these rod shaped uh, bodies in which corneal dystrophy so you will find it in the ries buckler corneal dystrophy remember r for ries and r for rod shaped bodies let's discuss a differential diagnosis the closest mimic is the thiel benke corneal dystrophy because both of them are bowman's layer dystrophies autosomal dominant and they have recurrent corneal erosions but don't worry we'll talk about how to differentiate these two in a while at the end of the video and other tgf beta 1 dystrophies like granular dystrophy lattice dystrophy evelino dystrophy they all can also be a close differential however these will involve deeper stromal layers unlike the rbcd which is limited to the bowman's layer similarly epithelial based uh, mimickers and recurrent traumatic erosions can also resemble the rbcds okay so here we are talking about the epithelial basement membrane dystrophies and uh, traumatic epithelial erosions right however there you will have a specific trauma related history and also there will be absence of family history let's talk about the management of ries buckler corneal dystrophy so medical management is basically for the recurrent erosions so we can give lubricants to maintain the moisture of the surface band-aid contact lenses for epithelial protection doxycycline and other matrix metalloproteinase inhibitors can also help in modulating the recurrent erosions we discussed the rationale behind doxycycline in previous video on the epithelial basement membrane dystrophy for visually significant scarring surgical treatments could be sought after so we can do a phototherapeutic keratectomy which is a treatment of choice the problem is recurrence so recurrence is pretty common with rbcd and it is reported in 50% of the patients within 2 years even in advanced cases when we do a lamellar or a penetrating keratoplasty the recurrence in the graft is really high and so patients need long term follow up all right so with this we end the rbcd and let's discuss some high yield examination pearls it's an autosomal dominant corneal dystrophy involving the basement membrane r124l mutation in the tgf beta 1 gene and early onset recurrent erosions from childhood rod shaped bodies on electron microscopy sharp hyper reflective anterior segment oct band at the bowman's layer and high recurrence rate after ptk or keratoplasty okay so here you can see a post ptk patient the central cornea shows some recurrence of opacities but the vision is improved compared to the pre treatment state or the pre eczymer state now let's move on to the second bowman's layer dystrophy and that is the thiel benke corneal dystrophy or tbcd this dystrophy is also caused by mutations in the tgf beta 1 gene on chromosome number 5 which encodes keratoepithelin now the classic mutation here is r55q though rare variants like r55w can also produce a very similar phenotype like the rice buckler or the ries buckler the tbcd follows an autosomal dominant inheritance pattern now regarding presentation patients usually present in childhood or teenage years and the typical complaints are bilaterally symmetrical recurrent 
painful erosions with tearing and photophobia. Quite similar to the other epithelial dystrophies and the Reese Buckler dystrophy. Now, what do we see on slit lab? The hallmark here is the central honeycomb shaped subepithelial opacities, and these opacities tend to merge over time. And, and because the basement membrane is replaced by abnormal material over here, the overlying epithelium will look irregular. Importantly, compared to the Reese Bucklers, the visual decline in TBCD is usually slower. And also the, uh, the recurrence of the uh, corneal erosions is also less compared to the Reese bucklers here. On anterior segment OCD, which is very high yield for exams, you will find a band-like hyperreflective lesion at the level of the Bowman's layer. But unlike the Reese bucklers, this band here has sawtooth anterior projections into the epithelium. And also, the stromal interface is poorly defined here. Whereas, in the Reese buckler, it is pretty sharp. That sawtooth-like uh, look is a big differentiator between the RBCD and the TBCD. On electron microscopy, instead of the rod bodies, we'll see the characteristic curly fibers which explain the irregular surface clinically. On histopathology, we find that the Bowen's layer is disrupted and replaced by subepithelial proteinaceous deposits. These could be collagen or hyaline and therefore it stains well with the Mason's trichome stain. Now coming to the management, the approach here is very similar to the Reese bucklers. For recurrent erosions, you start with lubricants, hypertonic saline, banded contact lenses, and sometimes even short courses of topical steroids or, or oral doxycycline to modulate the MMB activity. For superficial plaques affecting the vision, PTK or superficial keratectomy can be helpful. And in advanced cases with deep stromal scarring, dark and even penetrating keratoplasty may be required. The recurrence rate here compared to the Reese bucklers is much lower, but it can still happen. All right, so let's talk about the differential. But first of all, we'll compare the most common differential that is Reese buckler with the Thiel BNK corneal dystrophy. These two are often confused, but remember that Reese bucklers usually present very early in life, sometimes even soon after birth, with severe and frequent recurrent erosions. Think of it as a rough start right from birth. The hallmark on slit lamp is reticular or geographical grey-white subepithelial plaques at the levels of the Bowman's layer, usually centered in the visual axis. On anterior segment OCT, the classic finding is sharply demarcated hyperreflective band at the level of Bowman's and a very nice interface with stroma. A good way to remember this is that Reese is sharp and has a sharp OCT band. On electron microscopy, you will see the famous rod-shaped bodies arranged in parallel lines. So R for Reese, R for rod bodies. Thiel Benke, on the other hand, tends to appear a bit later, usually in childhood or teenage years. And the erosions are present, but less severe and less frequent. They become less frequent with time. The slit lamp findings here are characteristic honeycomb pattern of subepithelial opacity. And on anterior segment OCT, instead of the sharp band, you will notice a, a sawtooth anterior projections with poorly defined stromal margin. All right, so on electron microscopy, you also have curly fibers. Now, both of them are autosomal dominant, Bowman's layer dystrophy. Both are caused by mutations in the TGF beta 1 gene, but the mutations here differ. Reese Buckler has R124L, Thiel Benke has R555Q. Another key difference is, is the course. Visual decline is faster, more severe in Reese Buckler, while Thiel Benke tends to progress more slowly. All right. Of course, there are other differentials uh, which can also cause recurrent corneal erosions, other TGF beta 1 related stromal dystrophies, but the lesions will be deeper here. And also EBMD and traumatic erosions. Of course, there will be a history of trauma in traumatic erosions and the, there will be absence of family history in EBMD. So with this, we end the lecture on high yield points regarding the Bowman's layer dystrophies in the cornea. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.